The Beatles are coming. The Be The Beatles. The Beatles are back in a big way. The only problem with making a video on the uh on the road is the traffic, eh? Every time cars pass, I have to slow down, hey, dear viewer. Thanks for tuning in, by the way. This is Zaidi boy, Hussein Zaidi, and uh, in the distance, I don't know if you can see or if I can zoom in, there's actually a couple of police cruisers like down the way over there. It's actually the crack of dawn and uh, literally <laughs> and uh, I'm waiting for the bus and uh, I thought I would uh, whip out my uh, obviously my trusty camera and talk about a couple of things infinite regression and causality once again I just want to square the whole thing away um, or at least continue that discussion. I've had some really great interactions with my atheist friends online. And the second thing I want to ask my atheist friends is what kind of evidence are you looking for in terms of proving God's existence? So, if there is a creator of the universe, and there is, first of all, First of all, you guys really should understand that it's not that us as religious people... It, I mean, here's our worldview. Actually, your worldview is that somebody just came up with this hypothesis. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is if there was a creator and he did have a purpose for her, uh, for us, and seeing as he doesn't come and talk to each one of us one on one, I hate this, right? And now, if I stand inside the bus shelter, I'm probably going to end up missing the bus. So these guys are pretty. Oh, here he comes! Here he comes! So I will get some. Uh, I will get some. Uh, hopefully, some nice audio on the bus. So it's a good old. 16 Hello Thanks man Can I grab one of those just yep. in case? Thank you Do you have smiles anyone? Next stop, Kent Avenue Bus, bus full of folks going off to work early in the morning, eh? So, you guys should, you guys should think of it from a religious person's point of view. What you think is that somebody came up with, with the notion of God. You see, police cruisers, guys. Understand if there is a God and he sent messengers Then all these arguments that we're giving you are not just things that people come up with. It's not just You see all of these arguments are essentially just responses to your denial of something that's self-evident which is God as in Every phenomenon proves him Everything in the universe proves him because nothing is self-explanatory, least of all the universe. So, it's not that someone such as myself was walking down the road one day and he suddenly came up with something. That's what you guys think. Well, somebody just what was Jesus, peace be upon him, was walking down the road. And then one day he decided to write the Bible. Or Moses, peace be upon him, was walking down the road. One day he decided to, to write the Torah. 
our Muhammad, peace be upon him, was walking down the road. One day he decided to write the Quran. What you guys should consider is that if there is a God, you need to look at it holistically, or at least appreciate the world view that if there is a God, He, first of all, is, from a religious perspective, He's sublime beyond anything. Okay, so you've got the universe. Okay, and then you've got whatever caused of the universe. Okay, so the universe includes everything. I'm not just talking about the Big Bang. Because then there's people that say, well, prior to that, the universe could have been expanding in the other direction. And then it, co it collapses and expands, and, you know, stuff like that. Or maybe the universe is one of many, you know, whatever. I'm ta when I say universe or world, I mean whatever is out there. So... Oh my god, I think I got on the wrong bus. This is such crap. I gotta go up and ask him what bus number this is. Hey man, I thought this was the 60s. Oh, the 302 night bus. Oh shoot, so when I get around the corner, okay. you can get it there. And can I use this ticket you gave me? Yeah. Right around the corner over there, right? When I want to pick this guy up. Oh. This isn't a bus stop. Sorry. It's down there. <laughs> down there at the corner. Next stop, Dan Point Road. Right here. I don't pick up the He was just being nice, man. You're meant to say thank you, sir. That would be the standard response, yo. Yeah, if you want <laughs> If you want the three, the sixteen, stand around the corner. Okay. Yeah, thank you, through. sir. God Not bless you. Minutes. All right, sir. Thank you. Right. There you go. Good old Canada. Good cheery folks all the way. And because I was talking to you guys, I got on the wrong bus. But okay. So here's the thing. First of all, God. Like you guys talk about God as a hypothesis, and you say, well, oh. Somebody was walking down the road one day and they came up with all this stuff. And then we've progressed it over the years and, and so forth. You know what? You guys should consider, and actually, the truth is it took me a while to realize that you guys think this way. And I urge you to, to do the same due diligence in terms of just trying to understand a person like my mindset conservative Muslim okay this is not the point I'm not trying to preach Islam I am just trying to preach God or at least let's just boil it down like this what I'm saying is okay God is a label really at the end of the day what I'm saying is is something as follows you've got two options you can either say that the universe or whatever is out there has always existed forever and it doesn't explain itself. Like, a system does not explain itself and the rules of that system are contained within that system. Guys, when you consider anything prior to the universe, you're talking about no time, no space, no energy, no matter, no physical laws, nothing. Right there, you've already left the bounds of science. You understand? You've already entered the realm of divinity, or the supernatural, or the metaphysical. Guys, you can't apply science or whatever pertains to this universe, you cannot apply to whatever existed a priori. Guys, here's the thing. Here's the real problem. The real problem is that science has this tendency to assume an air of arrogance, okay? Science is, is like, well, you know what? If I can't measure it, then it's not, you know, if I can't 
measure it or see it or if I can't, you know, empiricism. I call it empiricism. What you're saying is the following, like, God, you can't see Him. You can't describe Him. You can't explain Him. And so on and so forth, etc., etc. Those are actually very simplistic attributes. You see, God is great. And the same age that asks such newfangled questions... Calm down over there, will you? The same age that asks the guy in the in the in the in the in the van, he's like, poor poor Canadians, eh? They their their feathers get easily ruffled, and it's so much fun ruff. It's so much fun ruffling them at times. So guys, here's here's what I want to say to you or ask you are you really that arrogant to say that if something cannot be conceived of like understood by our brain then therefore it doesn't exist how could you possibly say something like that when quantum science is already showing us that inconceivable is actually part of the fabric of nature atoms being in two places at once a cause like one of my atheist friends was telling me about some of this stuff on Twitter a cause can actually precede its effect. And, you know, obviously man t uh, 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 matter and antimatter, all this kind of stuff. So you're saying, well, oh no, uh, show me God, or what's the evidence of God, and all these kinds of things. And you're approaching it from a classical scientific approach, and you've already got relativity that says that time, time is relative. Does that make sense? Do you actually understand the concept that time is relative? I could actually explain it to you. I've done so in another video. It's basically that if you're traveling at the speed of light, uh, essentially time stops. As you approach the speed of light, time slows, and when you are at the speed of light, time stops. Now I'm hoping that this gentleman bus driver lets me on the bus with my ticket. I'll tell him I, got, I was on the blue bus by mistake. And I got, I have the ticket. And will, will you let me on this bus, please? So let, let's see what he says. I mean, I'm wary of pointing the camera at some of these folks. So I sometimes do the underhand thing, which is like, I'll hold it down here. And he may or may not notice he's on film. He's being recorded. Hey man, I just got off the blue bus. Is that good? Thanks. What a nice man, a nice Canadian representative. You look Next like door. an actor, Next man, McAvoy. Some, something McAvoy. Anyway, okay. So, once again, quantum mechanics, quantum science, dear viewer, makes clear that the traditional and classical approach to science just doesn't fly. If you say, well, I can't, I don't believe in God because I can't see Him. But there's many things that you can't see that you know exist. Well, I can't smell Him. But there's many things that don't, you can't smell that you know exist. Well, I can't hear Him, etc, etc, etc. So then the question becomes, have you realized that A, there's many things that are outside that could, there's things that are outside of each of your senses, and then there are things that are outside of all of our senses, such as like electromagnetic waves, right, and microwaves, and things like that, that only scientific instruments pick up, etc., etc. So are we to discount those kinds of things just because we can't sense them or our instruments can't sense them? Now you'll say, well, I don't know. What, what? I mean, the whole purpose of this video is essentially what kind of proof do you want for the existence of God? So, from time to time in my atheistic videos, I quote this beautiful tradition from our sixth Imam, peace be upon him, the great, great, great grandson of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. It's called the tradition of the Myro Balan fruit. I keep forgetting to put the link in the description. You can look it up. Myro Balan. It's a very weird uh, word. Mark Yankee Radio October Bravo Alpha Lima Alpha November Myro Balan fruit. So. A physician, doctor, a 
atheist from India travels to Arabia to, to talk to her 60 mom, peace be upon her. And they have this discussion about proof of God's existence. And they go through a lot of these arguments, causality and design and, and so on and so forth. The guy's holding one of these fruits in his hand, a Mayor Obama fruit. And the Holy Imam, peace be upon him, basically says, where did this fruit come from? And the guy's like, it came from a tree. And so Holy Imam was like, peace be upon him, have you seen that tree? So essentially the, the fruit points toward the existence of a tree. Now, you don't have to have seen that tree to know that there is a tree that this fruit must have come from. It's basically the nature of the universe we live in. So in my discussion with my atheist friends on Twitter, I propose that there's only two alternatives. A, the universe has been forever, and that makes no sense whatsoever, if you think about it. The universe is subject to change. And this whole thing that's just evolving and changing, you're just saying it's been around forever, that, to me, that does, that, that's actually intellectually lazy. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, intuitively, it doesn't make any sense. And I'm beginning to grasp, you know, the right terminology with regards to explaining that. I had an atheist friend called Arcady, a really good friend in real life, fellow security guard. <laughs> and uh, I asked him once, I said, has the universe been around forever then? And he had to think about it, he had never thought about it. And I said, don't you realize that believing in the existence of a universe that is forever and goes back in time forever, and it simply just is, it's, it's self-sustaining. You know, we, we say in, 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 in Islam, there's a word, essentially, I believe it's swamad, Allah swamad. God is essentially independent of cause, essentially, what it is what it boils down to. Everything else has a cause. Everything else depends on other things for its existence. Now, either the universe is swamad, like self-subsisting, or not. Right? If the universe goes back in time forever, essentially what you're saying is that there's an infinite series of causality that just goes back in time. And what we say is that this makes no sense. And that there had to be an original cause. Right? Or, or, or what's another alternative? Did the universe just pop out of nothing? How is that possible? Do you understand that? This is impossible, that something can't just happen from nothing. But you'll say, well, that's what that's what God did, apparently, according to you. Well, yes, of course, because as soon as you, you know, the whole thing becomes, in a sense, to you guys, circular, but to us, it's self-evident. There had to be an, an uncaused cause, and by definition, that's God. Because the notion of an uncaused cause is so profound and impossible that there can only be one being that... that could be an uncaused cause. We call him in, in Islam, wajibul wujud, the necessary being. There had to be an uncaused cause. And that in itself is sufficient to say that it was God. The thing that is, that is the I am, or just is, or has always been, is self-sustaining, is not dependent on anything, is the source of everything. How could that be anything other than God? Like just the, just, just the fact that it's been around forever. Right now, once again, if you believe the universe has been around forever and just is, and you just simply don't want to accept the obvious reality that it must have come from somewhere and been caused by something super magnificent, well, then that's fine. Then, then, then at that point, we agree to we agree to disagree. Okay, so once again, the universe is expanding. The universe is a, a series of causes and effects, and do these causes go back in time? No, that's an infinite progression. There had to be an uncaused cause. Now, again, with regards to the nature of God, so in the tradition of the Meyer Balan fruit, the Holy Imam Pishkikon asked the atheist, the atheist is saying the same thing, the physician from India, he's like, well, I can't see God. And I only believe in whatever my senses uh, manifest to me. 
And the Holy Imam peace be upon him through various means tried to explain to the guy that your senses are subservient to your mind. Your mind is actually the key to the whole thing. Because you could be sleeping and you still perceive things. Or there you could it ha you might have memories. Or there's instinct. Right? Like how do birds know like baby birds know how to feed and baby kids for that matter? Like there's things like the senses are not the soul. You know, if you if you rely on empiricism and say I only believe what is manifested through the senses, then essentially you're saying that the senses are the fountain of knowledge. Right? The senses are like if you know something, then it's because of the senses. And if you didn't have senses, then you wouldn't know anything. However, this is not true. You can be blind, deaf, mute, dumb, in a coma, and your your brain is still operating. You still have a sense of awareness. You still have knowledge, dreams, memories, etc. And who knows what else? In any case, the guy persisted, saying, "Well, the senses, the senses." So the holy Imam asked him a very interesting series of questions. He said, "Have you have you been to every part of this earth?" The guy says, "No." And he said, for instance, have you scaled all the mountains? Have you de dived into the depths of all the seas? And he asked him, peace be upon him, have you, have you traveled throughout the universe? Have you been to every part of the universe? The guy's like, no. Then he's like, why are you presuming that God doesn't, if God is embodied in a form as you would like to suppose, why, are you, why, are you, why do you suppose that he doesn't exist in some other part of this universe? Right? Next stop, Santa Monica Boulevard. Once again, so let's say God did exist in a corporeal form. You're simply arrogant in, in demanding that he should make his presence known to you. Do you expect him to show up at your door and knock on your door? Isn't it enough that you've got a conscience, you've got intelligence, you've got all these signs? And logically speaking, you know, when you look at the beautiful, infinitely, varied and amazing universe that manifests infinite intelligence and, and whatnot, it's obvious that it just can't be. You know, in the same tradition, the Holy Imam, peace be upon him, said two things that I'm going to end with. We're basically at the station here, eh? I might, I might take you up onto the platform, dear viewer. And there's not really much more to say. I just wanted to, like, essentially continue a uh, chain of discussion I was having with my atheist friends online on Twitter. So first of all, it suffices to prove God that the universe is ordered. That's it. Order can't self-exist. And I get into all these kinds of discussions with my atheist friends who insist on nitpicking. Like, oh no, order, like people will say, that, like, there is no order, that this is, the universe is chaos, and it blows my mind. How can you look around at all the stuff around you and say that this is chaos? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's the truth, just as you speaking to one another. You speaking to one another is an ordered phenomenon, and just that in itself is enough proof of, you know, higher intelligence, essentially. Thanks, ma'am. Appreciate the ride, brother. The, the, the smiling faces of the workers of the world. Jonah Hill, baby. Yeah, I mean, I keep going round in circles with this stuff, and people get so pissed off at these videos for some reason. I get unlikes, but you know, I do it for the those people once in a while who take the time to stop and they actually leave like a five or seven paragraph comment, like really going into, okay, well, at 17 minutes you said this, but this, and that's all I'm trying to do: get into your mindset and understand it and all this kind of stuff. Hey. I'm publishing a rebuttal to Richard Dawkins' The God Delusion. My book's going to be called The No God Delusion, and it'll be out as soon as I can get, get up off my hiney.
and uh, you know, just get it together, get it edited, all this kind of stuff. I have a publisher. I mean, I'm self-publishing it. I might as well, I might as well fess up. So, once again, do you expect God to appear at your doorstep? That's not going to happen. Moreover, do you accept that there are things outside of your 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 understanding that may exist? Things you first of all, things that you can't sense. Do you accept that such things might exist? Of course, you have to accept it. Like science, if nothing else, has shown us that. Wow, it's only like six in the morning. It's like six million people. Nice. Huh? Privacy? You're on goddamn camera as we speak, man. What privacy are you talking about, eh? See? Day in the life of a YouTuber. Everyone wants privacy. Well, this is the public sphere. And you're all going to be on YouTube, you bastards. Every last one of you. You as well. I, be I better get on the, um, on the next train, just in case someone wants to knock me out, eh? People don't like other people having more fun than them, dear viewer. This is essentially what I surmised some time ago. Okay, so... Do you accept, dear viewer... So, first of all, okay, here's three-part uh, thing I'd like you to take away. If there is a God, then... We didn't make up all this stuff, and he did send prophets, okay? Now, notwithstanding the fact there may be things wrong with religion today, as, as, it, as it stands, okay? Like, there may have been things that are changed in the Bible, and the Torah, and the way Muslims practice their religion, so on and so forth, but the precepts behind them are all good. And no, they don't make you bad people, and they shouldn't. And if they do, that's not really religion. I mean... Anyway, that's a different kind of discussion. Like, my own personal belief is that an atheist can be a believer. If you're a principled person and a good person and you follow the dictates of your conscience and reason, that's it. You go to heaven, as far as I'm concerned, and I can actually prove that from the Quran and the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. Now, on the other hand, if you're a so-called religious person and you're rude and you're an ingrate and you're just a boorish mass of complaining flesh that contributes nothing but misery to yourself and those around you, not, not to mention the world at large, then you know what, you might be like the, the, the most erudite scholar of biblical matters or the Torah or the Quran or Buddhist or whatever, but what I mean, what I'm trying to say is labels don't matter and in, in terms of religion, all I was trying to say is that you should understand the world view that if there was a God and he did send these religions, it's not that somebody was just walking around uh, along the road one day. This is what you guys think, that somebody was walking along the road one day and he suddenly started coming up with all the stuff. Well, there must be a God and then suddenly, eons later, we've got all these major religions. Anyway, so just keep, bear in mind that if there is a God, he would have communicated his purpose to us. Second thing is, understand that there are things that you cannot sense that you still understand exist. So we didn't know of the existence of electromagnetic waves until the 20th century when we had instrumentation that was, uh, you know, that was able to measure this kind of stuff. Now, back in the day, if somebody had started talking about electromagnetic waves or even like Copernicus with gravity, they might have been laughed off the boat, right, or the bus, or the subway, but um, these things exist. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that there are things that are outside of your sense periphery that exist. You must be aware of this. So therefore, I beg the question once the again, what evidence Street would you, Station. what evidence would there be of God? Like, and if such sublime things exist, would he not be the most sublime? Like, why, why would you expect him to be measurable, or seeable, or hearable, or smellable? Now, taking that a step further, 
taking that step further, the whole thing with the, the so-called scientific approach, which is not very scientific, if you deny causality, causality, all the science is causality, and, and it all boils down to original cause. And it's funny that you study this amazing universe without realizing that there's something to it. There's so I mean, of course there's something to it. It couldn't have just happened by itself. It's obviously not random. But moreover, have you understood that there may be things that are beyond your understanding, right? This, the arrogance of, of the atheistic scientific approach, dear user or viewer, arrogance is that we suppose and we demand that unless we can understand something, it's not real. How absurd is that? And now once again, God is great and we've got quantum theory and we've got all these explicable, inexplicable things. They're actually, as far as traditional science is concerned, quantum science is like voodoo magic. Atoms can be in two places at once. Things are traveling back in time. You know, there's matter and there's antimatter and all this kind of stuff. And so, it's essentially steps in the direction of what we're talking about to begin with. Whether you're simply a spiritual person that talks about higher intelligence or greater being or the primal source or cause. I mean, forget the label God and forget the forget organized religions. Like, I'm a Muslim, obviously, but I'm not trying to preach Islam. I am saying, however, that to us, God is self-evident. And it's obvious that the person or the being that created time is not bound by time. Do you understand? Like, if you were to draw some guy in two dimensions, okay, would that two-dimensional character be able to understand three dimensions? It's impossible. And similarly, we're bound in four dimensions. God is a, at the least a pan-dimensional entity. And once again, like the way, the way you guys see it, my dear atheist friends, is you're looking at this whole thing saying, well, these guys just come up with all these fairy tales. And what we're saying is that, you know what? The, the universe is the, is the ultimate scripture. The universe itself. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, said that. He said that there's no worship like meditating on the universe. And when you meditate on the universe, you become like Einstein, who's like, I, that's the God I worship, essentially. The God who, is in, who created this amazing universe. And, and you see, the thing is, it's, I'll leave it at this. I mean, I'm kind of going around in circles as usual, but it's kind of two parallel modes of thinking. A, to assume that we know everything or even anything, and to go around life and to live your life as assuming that higher mantle, assuming that you know things. It's called conditioned thinking. You walk around and you've got a label for everything. And as soon as you get to a point where you don't have a label, your brain starts going and you get all stressed out and then finally you label it. Maybe you might get some help from some freaking expert, right? Now, on the other hand, my whole thing is this. When you understand that everything is infinite and everything is changing and everything has meaning and everything has unity, everything's connected, all these kinds of things, like, uh, like a, the, the thinking of a person who essentially resides in God, as it were, a person who is essentially That's done away with labels and, 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 and even the label of self and, and me and whatnot. And he sees everything as a series of interconnected phenomena. It's a different, it's a different way of living. Like you guys ask, what's the use of believing in God? I'm happy as I am. Well, you're not happy. We've got like a massive suicide rate. People are taking pills. Everyone's stressed out. And these people look happy to you. Does anyone look happy? I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm, nobody's happy. The only time you're happy, guys, is when you disconnect from your from your 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 uh, cogitating uh, mental apparatus, essentially, and, and do away with labels and go into the formless and go into the spiritual. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? So, 
what's the value of believing in God and religion? I mean, the thing is, the whole thing becomes an endless, wondrous mystery and, and a dazzling dream of immense proportionality. Like, everything becomes just a wonder. Like, any little thing, like, you know, once again, your mind is seeking labels and, 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 and trying to keep you bound in the world of form. Imam Ali, peace be upon him, he said that I haven't seen a single thing but that I saw God before it, with it, and after it. And so once again, belief in God essentially is attaching yourself to the world of formlessness. Formlessness. It's being self-aware and mindful and understanding that whatever is regurgitating in your mind right now is baseless. It has no basis. It's just stuff you're coming up with. Anyway, I've rambled on enough. I appreciate you uh, leaving me your thoughts. The thing is, like, on Twitter, one of my beautiful atheist friends answered my query about infinite regression, saying, well, infinite regression, like, the prop, you know, they answered it without really answering it, as usual. See, you guys will be like, well, if God created the universe, who created God? Okay? Or, let's just make that, put that in layman's terms. If something caused the universe, well, something did cause the universe, that's the fact of the matter, right? So then the question becomes, what caused that? What caused that? And then what caused that? And then it goes back in time forever, which is impossible. Understand that. So you can't get around that. Unless you accept there was an original cause. And an uncaused cause, by definition, must be God. Anyway, thank you for listening. I appreciate you uh, leaving a comment. And obviously, if you're into this kind of nonsense, then please subscribe.